Oh, I was. <laughs> oh, hey, is it noon already? Is it? it is, it's oh, you know high. what? It's Both actually yet? my watch says we got a minute, we, but my no, phone okay, says I'll it's we, we're a minute. a minute late. Now we're not. We're on time. Our director Tessa, we are on time. Uh, welcome to the 14th annual ONTV TV Food Drive live in the ONTV TV studio here at the Orient Center. 14th annual food drive for fish. It's a fun drive and a food drive with me is Matt Pfeiffer and I'm Ian Locke, executive director here at Orion Neighborhood Television. We welcome you into the studios here. Uh, we have a great interview coming up with Representative Donnie Steele coming up uh, in this hour. Oh, I'm so excited for that. We're she is <laughs> such a gem. Can you tell we all know each other and we all get along, we have a good time. So it's good to have Rep Steele in here to assure us everything uh, Lansing and uh, the work she's doing up for um, our district and everything. So uh, again, here we are in the studio. Why are we here? We're here for the uh, food drive to help our food pantry, Oxford Orion Fish. And our collection goal, our cash goal is $6,000 for this year. And um, so far, so good. We've been doing a good job with those uh, uh, sponsorships. And yeah. um, it's a different type of year. Matt, you know, like uh, there's a food pantry next door. Yes. You, you do other philanthropic things around town. And we're finding that um, the reaction to the food drive is a, it's a little subdued, a little bit in the community as it has. It's been not that way in the past. And we're finding that the, the cost of food and it's still there and it's still a pressure on a lot of uh, residents and those in need. Without a doubt. I mean, with, um, you know, the talk on uh, in Washington is that the um, the inflation is under control now and isn't um, and that it's true that it's not growing yeah. at the rate it was growing but unfortunately um, it hasn't gone down and it's yeah. not going down so these elevated costs are here to stay uh, as you know um, in fact this morning uh, Mondays are our uh, forgotten harvest mm -hmm. uh, day and so I just finished up that across the street and uh, our demand is strong. Uh, today we fed somewhere in the neighborhood of 350 families wow. and uh, it ranges between you know 300 and, and uh, as high as like 450 wow. um, and that demand is uh, we're uh, three and a half years into this and the demand is strong. And that's um, on Mondays at yeah yeah uh, so if, you know well, if, yeah, well, if you are uh, food challenged or you know anybody um, that is food challenged uh, we give out food to anybody who needs it Every Monday, uh, we're across the street uh, from the, uh, well, kind Woods, of across Woodside from here and down Bible. the street. Yeah, we're at Canterbury Village across from the uh, the beautiful Orient Township, uh, award-winning Orient Township complex. Mm -hmm. And so um, we're there every Monday. We uh, we start giving out food about nine, but we'd recommend people get there earlier. And uh, because it, it line lines up, up. It we'll, have, we'll have some people there as early as six, 6.30. Wow. Yeah, and, and uh, some of our regulars. And this location for Forgotten Harvest is like the, the we are North the northern Oakland yeah. hub for yeah. those who are searching for food. Yeah, they are. Uh, they set up uh, during COVID. Uh, we started this off, and um, and it's been a consistent effort. All volunteer mm. locally. So you asked me a little bit about you know a board or whatever. Yeah, no, yeah. we're just uh, we're just a scrappy uh, bunch of volunteers that uh, believe that <laughs> everybody. Everybody deserves food, yep. and um, there's uh, nothing that, as, as a parent, as a, a community member, uh, and uh, a human, there's nothing I can imagine more than looking my kids in the eye and uh, not having food for them um, or, my, or my significant other or, or loved ones. So um, I think it's a, it's a wonderful thing, um, and uh, we're going to continue to do it. But the need is strong. Yeah. But anybody yeah. who needs food, you can come on Monday morning and get food. And then we also, I, I, I think you know this, we built out a pantry there. I know today we're gonna to be talking yeah, and yeah. raising money for fish, uh, which does an incredible job uh, helping uh, families in the area. Um, one great thing about where we live, we live in one of the most generous communities on Absolutely. the planet. And uh, nobody in our community goes without help that needs it. So if um, somebody needs it, they're gonna get it. Yep. So at any rate, um, you know, they've got the pantry there. Um, across here, we opened a pantry. You being? Uh, well, it, you know, again, a scrappy group of volunteers yep. uh, with across our friends at, uh, at Canterbury Village. Mm -hmm. Keith Aldridge has been uh, instrumental in terms yep. of giving space, and he's been a great financial supporter um, um, in his, his organization. And, and he's been, a, in the past, he's been a great supporter of Well, I've got a well, little, little thing I'll tell uh -oh. you um, about that uh, coming up to help uh, help us in a minute. Breaking um, news is good. And, and then, uh, so we're <laughs> open there on, if, if somebody can't make it to the Monday morning, mornings mm -hmm. if you show up there uh, any Monday or Wednesday that's not a holiday 
from uh, 1030 to 230, you can also get food. And yep. so, uh, um, and that's, uh, we do our annual coat drive, coat, hat, and glove drive at Northern Flooring. We've been doing that for seven or eight years now. We've uh, um, thousands and thousands of yeah. uh, pieces. Sometimes in a year, we'll get into the two, 3,000 number of coats, hats, gloves. Um, our friends at um, at uh, the uh, the Legion help us. Yeah. Our friends at, at the uh, Lions Club, our friends at the uh, Knights of Columbus have been huge supporters well, of this. And that goes back to, I mean, we've been doing this for 14 years. This is the 14th wow. Food Drive for Fish, which is kind of crazy to think. Yeah. And it's now a community event. It, it started out as an idea mm -hmm. and just to help fish, and then it turned it has turned into this thing. I mean, we're, we're tele, telethon style. We're here with you and other leaders in our community uh, helping those in need. And um, the sponsorships from our uh, big business and small business and the small donors are, are, are bringing in cash donations for fish. And um, it, it, they have always been there. The, the businesses has always been there for this event and for fish. And just to highlight some of our sponsors for today, let's see uh, a reel with all of our sponsors for today's uh, edition of the Food Drive. Great. I think. That uh <laughs> All of us at Owen TV would like to thank our corporate sponsors for their generous donations. Today's portion of the 2024 Owen TV Food Drive is brought to you by Madison Heights Plumbing and Heating Supply, located at 719 East Mandolin Avenue in Madison Heights. The family owned business has been serving the Detroit metro area for over 30 years. Madison Heights Plumbing and Heating Supply is supporting the food drive for a second year and is a five-day sponsor. In addition to the ONTV Food Drive, they proudly support other charitable events and organizations, such as Toys for Tots, Bottomless Chest, and St. Jude's Children's Hospital. For more information, give them a call at 248-588-4690 or visit their website, madisonheightsplumbingsupply.com. Northern Wholesale Flooring, located at 118 Indian Wood Road in Lake Orion. Northern Wholesale Flooring has been an active member of the community for over 38 years. They are a returning partner of the ONTV Food Drive and are a five-day sponsor. For more information, you can visit their website, nflooring.com. Ohana Wealth Advisory. This is Ohana Wealth Advisory's second year supporting the Food Drive, and they are a five-day sponsor. For more information, you can give them a call at 248-246-8080. Kroger, located at 3097 South Baldwin Road in Orion Township. This year, Kroger is a five-day sponsor, thanks to a generous $500 donation to the Oxford Orion Fish Food Pantry. For more information about Kroger, visit their website, kroger.com, or give them a call at 248-393-393. 0765. Meyer of Lake Orion, located at 1107 South Lapeer Road in Lake Orion. Meyer is a year round supporter of the Oxford Orion Fish Food Pantry, collecting food pantry donations through their Simply Give program. They are a five day sponsor of the Owen TV Food Drive with a charitable $500 contribution. For more information, visit their website, Meyer.com. M3 Investments, located at 990 North Main Street in Royal Oak. Having a plan that is designed around your goals and financial situation can help you successfully navigate the risks you are likely to face. Whether you're just starting out, thinking about retirement, or just retired, Christine can help. For more information about M3 Investments, you can give them a call at 248-543-3400. Galling Buick GMC, located at 1491 South Lapeer Road in Lake Orion. Galling is a longtime supporter of the food drive, returning this year as a five-day sponsor. For more information, you can visit their website at gallingbuickgmc.com. Lucky's Natural Foods, located at 101 South Broadway Street in Lake Orion. 
The natural and organic grocery store has been serving the Lake Orion community for 50 years. Lucky's Natural Foods is a one-day sponsor of the ONTV Food Drive with a $200 donation to the Oxford Orion Fish Food Pantry. For more information about Lucky's, you can visit their website, luckysnaturalfoods.com, or you can give them a call at 248-693-1209. And Palazzo de Bacci, located at 4291 Lapeer Road in Lake Orion. They are returning sponsors of the ONTV Food Drive with a generous donation of $200. The local Italian restaurant is celebrating their 20th anniversary. Plaza de Bocci gives customers a chance to play a game of bocce ball while they eat. For more information, you can visit their website, palazzodebocci.com. All right, Jim counting me down back here in the studio. Uh, volunteer uh, Jim over here on camera. What is that, camera one? Thanks for coming in. As always, every you know, all the crew here is volunteer. Matt's a volunteer. Kim's a volunteer. Everybody's here is volunteer at ONTV, and we thank them for helping us bring this live program to you and to work towards our goal of $6,000 for fish. Now, you mentioned something about uh, Canterbury Village. Well, I always try to have Mr. something. Oh, I don't like to show say, up, you know, empty-handed. You always uh, come in with a surprise, yeah. and my jaw ends up hitting the floor. So what, what do we have this year? What's going on? Well, we've got our good friend, uh, Mr. Keith Aldridge uh, of uh, Canterbury Village, and um, spoke to Keith uh, a couple days ago. Keith is going to uh, put up some matching funds. Ooh. So that means we need you. We need you, I'm looking at the TV, I think we need <laughs> you to participate. And I'm really speaking to, uh, you know, I mean, it can be a family, but our business owners. If every business kicks in a hundred bucks, what an impact uh, you will make on uh, the food needs of our local residents. So um, Keith's gonna put up uh, up to a grand, but we need those matching cool. funds. So a thousand bucks from Keith, a thousand from you guys, and we're gonna have another two grand to add to wow. the total to get us to that six grand max. So um, business owners, you can reach out to me. Uh, obviously, just call up to ONTV. You can donate there. You can donate on the link. Yep. On yep. the uh, and I never know. I, how about the <laughs> OrionONTV.org? Yeah. So uh, this is where I take. Uh, he's the guy that's the mover and shaker. I'll take care of business. So OrionONTV.org. Click on the Food Drive logo. It'll take you right to our charity GoFundMe and you can donate right there. Uh, as you can see the graphic on the wall, you can donate online, like we said, at orionontv.org. Click the Food Drive logo and it'll take you over there. there some fees are taking out, taken out of the online uh, donations, just so you're aware. Uh, but if you donate a, a check or food donations in person, 100% of all donations go directly to fish. ONTV keeps nothing, we just collect it and pass it on. And we're looking to fill our production van uh, with food donations as well. Those numbers are down as far as donations go, but our cash donations are right where they need to be. Yeah, I mean, it's a great time to, to purge your pantry, but one thing to keep in mind, and I know well, you guys deal with this, we deal with this um, <laughs> over across the street with the donations. Well, we appreciate the donations. We want donations of things that you would want to eat. In other Absolutely. words, um, we don't want things that are uh, expired. I mean, they could be just expired canned goods. That's going to be okay. Um, but we're looking for food that uh, we can feel good about giving yeah. to our neighbors. Uh, we're not looking for damaged, you know, <laughs> ripped open bags and stuff. If because it's a can of rusty green beans, we got. I mean, we don't. Not, I, nobody likes no. rusty green beans. I've, no. I've always said. Uh, so we want to. We want to make sure that we're uh, respecting, yeah. um, you know, who we're donating Absolutely. to as well. Well, but come on, you all have a pantry and you've all got some stuff. Grab yeah. a few items, you drop it by here, um, right at, right into the van. Uh, yep. You can also drop it by uh, my store. We have our vestibule open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So you can drop off any food there. And of course, um, the cash donations are easy to do mm -hmm. online, but you can bring a check by ONTV. All week, and just to remember, we're here all week uh, during our uh, open hours from 10 a.m. to 9 p.m. Uh, the physical donations are coming until 8 p.m. Then we have to lock up the van and move the, the donations indoors. But you can drop a check off any time. ONTV also is a year-round drop-off location for uh, fish. Yep. So if you can't make it this week, we get it. But you can bring it in and we can get it to those in need. And if those hours don't work for you, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, you can drop it off at Northern and I'll bring the food over. That's right. And uh, so there is no excuse. We all can do a little bit, and, and that's um, 
that's where the magic happens. If everybody does a little, first of all, everybody is a part of the solution, which is wonderful. Yep. Um, so everybody, you know, doing a little bit, and it makes it a lot easier. You know, nobody has to to uh, mortgage their home to help others. Um, we all do a little bit, and we can make a well, big difference. Well, we just had a walk-in this morning, a ten-dollar donation. Mm -hmm. A walk-in uh, from the senior center right over here at the Orient Center came in, dropped off ten bucks. That ten dollars can the the way fish can stretch a dollar mm -hmm. is amazing. They get yeah. discounts and wholesale and at cost, right, when they purchase the food. So ten bucks goes a long way. Every little bit helps. Um, collection totals. Do we have a total so far of where we're at based on some of our sponsorships right now? And not including the announcement of the matching funds that uh, Matt just said, uh, we're at currently at. 2350 of course that's going to go way high over the course, uh, over the course of this week yeah, yeah. and probably even by the end of the day um we usually uh, get a nice uh, batch of donations as we kick off the fund drive which is great and it's testament to uh, our community at large matt and the, everybody out in the community who do things on a daily basis to help those in need uh yeah. here's a quick video we're going to jump to a quick video and uh, wait i gotta stop talking oh, i don't know you can talk through the video. We can talk oh, for four ahead. minutes. Oh, so we had a video about fish and uh, how they impact the community. So here's here's a little video that uh, Joe Johnson, our studio manager, put together about fish behind. Isn't the he a gem, that Joe Johnson? A good-looking guy. <laughs> He's great on a camera phone and a big camera. He is. He is, uh, he is a busy. what a what an always icon busy. and a community gem. Always busy. Yeah. Oxford Orion Fish is celebrating 50 years of serving neighbors in need in Oxford, Lake Orion, Addison, and Oakland Township. The food pantry serves almost 2,000 households every year, which equates to over 4,500 individuals with almost 200,000 pounds of food going out the door. The pantry adapted to get through the COVID pandemic, but now inflation is taking its toll the high cost of groceries and rent is affecting clients and donations. You know, it tends to ebb and flow. There were months when donations are down and then we look back and think, well, you know, food prices are high. Uh, so, but then the next month, you know, well, donations will be up again, food and monetary donations. So it just sort of ebbs and flows. I think our community is cognizant of the fact that prices are up. So maybe we can give a little more knowing that, you know, Oxford Orient Fish is a big part of this community. I think they're well aware that, you know, it's, we're affected too. So they do give, if that makes sense. Yeah. With inflation, do you find that there's more of a need? Do you find that that affects clients coming in? Yes, yes. I know I had one just the other day saying her rent went way up and her, um, you know, subsidies that she gets for food went way down. So she stopped me at the door. She said, I don't know what we would do without you guys to bridge that gap. So they are being affected. Following the holidays, donations get a little light during the first quarter of the year. That's why ONTV plans its food drive in February every year, and cash donations allow the pantry to purchase meat, dairy, and other perishables. We always have needs, but uh, we manage to fill it. We get a lot of monetary donations too, so then we can purchase whatever we don't get in. Um, and forgotten harvest has been huge right now. They're delivering us a lot of really great products that we wouldn't be able to have. Produce, meats, a lot of fun stuff. Everyone from board members to staff volunteers their time and they depend on community groups and individuals to help keep the shelves stocked. Without the community support, it would be a completely different thing here. I mean, they're we're well known in the community, so they donate money, they donate food, they participate in the food drives, they put it in our drop box. Um, when we have special events, they'll sign up, like we were just talking about, to see if they can come help at a food, you know, at a sorting thing after a food drive. It's our community is huge, and they also know about us, so they can spread the word if they, you know, find someone who might be struggling, or a neighbor, or a neighbor's, you know, child, or whatever, and they call here and get them in, and so. Just the whole network is, is wonderful. If you or someone you know is currently facing hardships, don't hesitate to seek out help. Using the food pantry services is like taking a trip to the corner grocery store. I would say call, make an appointment, um, and come in. I mean, people come in for the first time and they're just wowed about, wow, this isn't what I expected. Or they've been to another food pantry 
where they just get a box of food. So we take them all through, you know, we'll take you through, you can choose what you want for your family, you know, we'll give you a card, you'll know exactly how much you can get. It's, we found it's a very friendly atmosphere here. I, once pe people have told us before, they, the first time was hard to come in, but now we just, it's love it. You guys are so kind, you know, it's not intimidating. We don't feel less than, so yeah, I, we think we're doing it good. <laughs> For more information or to volunteer your time, call 248-628-3933 or visit OxfordOrianFish.org. All right, uh, fish. Uh, been around 40 plus years, a, a pillar in the community, helping those in need around the Oxford, Orion, Addison, and Oakland townships. Please donate today to the 14th Annual Food Drive. Our collection goal, again, is $6,000, and it feels like we're going to scream by that goal very, very soon. Get those physical donations. Again, you can see at Fish, it, they treat all of their clients with respect. It looks like a grocery store. You pick the items that you want for your family. So, uh, yeah, support today. And uh, without further ado, we teased it earlier at the top of the show that we have a special guest in the studio, Representative Donnie Steele, is here with Kim Radowski to talk about all things Lansing and all things our district and all these good things. So we're going to toss it over to Kim. Take it away, Kim. Hi, everyone. Thanks for tuning in to the Oxford Orion Fish Food and Fun Pantry today. I am joined by Representative Donnie Steele. She represents District 54, which is here in Lake Orion, parts of Auburn Hills, Oakland Township, Bloomfield, and Bloomfield Hills. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Kim. I really appreciate you introducing me and being able to like um, advocate for fish uh, for our local community and Ian does such a great job mm -hmm. and we were joined by Matt Pfeiffer and he's always been a huge advocate and uh, Kim as well too so it's a a great community organization and uh, I appreciate being a part of it and being allowed to speak yeah. on half of Orion and Lansing so <laughs> <laughs> so Lansing mm. Mm. you hear <laughs> so, so Kim introduced me, so now I want to introduce Kim. So Kim is our great treasure for Orion Township, and she's been doing a great job. And when I ran for state representative, Kim um, backfilled my two years as a, lo uh, a local trustee and uh, a community advocate, and um, she's doing a great job in the treasurer's office, and we have a lot of uh, common reality <laughs> yeah we do <laughs> we've been discussing a lot just since we've been sitting here um well first of all it's really interesting um what was it like going from local right here in orion to lansing what what is that what has it been like for you oh uh, well um i think it's interesting because i was two years on the safety path committee in orion township mm -hmm. as a committee member right. and then i ran for township board and then I ran for treasurer two terms and I went fulfilled half. And so 12 years total yeah. in local government mm -hmm. and I was just getting the knack of it. So it took 12 <laughs> years per se to understand right. that every day, like what you had said earlier, you're learning every day what every you didn't day. know that you didn't know that you didn't know. Right. And um, at the state level, multiply it by a million oh my gosh. and so if I take a million oh years God. times 12 that's how long it's gonna make me understand <laughs> that job because it's so um, big yeah. the government is really big and bureaucratic and there's a lot going on and I keep on trying to learn as much as I can to how I can hone it in right. to be able to actually help the district in which I serve right. to better utilize the services in which the state provides that we can make sure that we're cohesive yeah. at, from the state to the local. So, which is, which bring, we'll, we'll talk yeah. about the local portion of it. Yeah, and, and I, I was gonna just mention, and last year, uh, you know, in my first year as treasurer, I came up to Lansing for the Capital Conference that the Michigan Township Association puts on, and you were one of the panel speakers, and there were four speakers, and it was, um, all of you at that time had been local uh, elected officials at one time and then are now in Lansing. And that was an interesting conversation because it's, um, you know, you have a handle on how the, the things that go on in Lansing, the decisions that are made there that um, will affect local communities, you have an understanding of what that's gonna be like when it trickles down and then we have to implement them, you know, at the township or the city or the village level. 
Um, so that was an interesting uh, conversation. And I think we're lucky that someone like Rep Steele is up there and has uh, our interests at, at heart. So it's when she calls me Rep Steele, I'm like, you can call me Donnie, because I'm not going to call you Madam Treasurer. No, no, okay. <laughs> okay. All right. We'll go to it's Donnie a, and Kim. Okay. That's fine. That's good. The Donnie and Kim <laughs> show. So, um, I like it. Yeah. The, 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 I, the local control, um, and like when I was the treasurer, we were paying attention to aggregate mining yeah. and taking that out of the local uh, Airbnb, which is your, um, you know, everybody knows short -term who Airbnb, rentals, yeah, yeah. short-term rentals and how they were going to take. And, we, and as a treasurer, I was always advocating, but now the biggest one that they have taken away from local control is the use of land for solar and wind power that they took yeah. out of the local hands um, in November before we went on break, which we have now been on break since literally November. Yeah. Um, and they, they have a uh, solar green energy, green, wind and solar green energy plan to do away with the fossil fuels by 2040. 40, I think. Yeah. Yes, yeah. And, and the way that they were able to accomplish it is to allow these agricultural communities to uh, not be in control of the land for agricultural purposes, but the state mandating that if somebody wants to sell their land to solar panels and wind power, that the local government no longer has yeah. a um, say so, which I am yeah. nay. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so <laughs> that's, when, and I, okay, so I'm just going to go back a little bit. Sometimes when people hear this, they think local control. What does that mean exactly? And that's the ordinances that we have that control what happens in our community. Because, you know, Orion Township is different from other townships that have different geography and, you know, makeup and zoning and this, that, and the other. So, you know, it took me a, a while to understand, you know, when you say local control, what does that mean? It means what's best for our community, what makes the most sense in our community. So, you know, we, we are not largely agricultural, but it could still affect us. Yes. And we could still have a situation where if, if a developer wanted to come in and put these, these types of, you know, solar, wind, alternative energy, um, that we wouldn't have, we wouldn't be able to say, we don't necessarily want it there or with this, you know, next to this place in this zone or so. And being that you're on the planning commission mm -hmm. and um, you were an integral part of the master plan, which is a terrible, tedious project, which I'm so <laughs> thankful for people like you that took it, it was under. A lot of fun. <laughs> it's fun, a fun project for us. Yes, it was and fun. if you look at the master plan, you start off with a map of where we are now and where do we want to be in 10 years. Yeah. And you literally take a master plan from the five-year master plan from five years ago and 10 years ago, and you, put, you start basically from scratch um, and say, okay, do we want to continue to have industry along M24? Do we want right. to have yeah. commercial in going um, towards like the community and the village of, right. of, of Orion? And that's what local control is. So you have a, a master plan, you have a map, and you say, okay, if we are going to have agricultural Land. Where would we like it? Where would we like it? Where, Where does it, it make the most sense? Yes, yes. and that's what. Yeah. And, and if you can, and you, if you can say, okay, I don't really. I think that we're semi-rural in, you know, up and down Walden and Silver Bell. We don't want to have, I don't know, um, GM plant right. on Walden Road or a gas station on the corner yeah. of Walden and Silver Bell. And that gives you that local control. Right. And so some of these, like wind and solar power is the same way in these agricultural communities to go green. So you have people that are voting on where those solar panels would be when they are in, I don't know, um, uh, Ypsilanti. Yeah. So how does Ypsilanti, Ypsilanti have what's best for Antonaga and right. um, Claire and Midland? Yeah. That's, that's not, so as a right. state, we can't tell you guys how you should run your individual communities. That's right. And so, um, in my, I've been an advocate for reliable energy 
uh, first yeah. and making sure that we're not having brownouts and blackouts and yeah. our, I would like to keep our dollars of how much our energy costs down instead of reinvesting and taking the local control out of uh, these communities and let's re well, concentrate on reliability. Right. Let's spend our money there. And so I, I just wanted to go into one quick, yeah. there's a, a ballot initiative, it's mm -hmm. called Local Control Initiative, and it will, it's been, um, the Citizens for Local Control. Thank you. Yep. And, and then the ballot initiative has been approved by the mm -hmm. Elections Commission. Uh, it was approved on January 19th, and right now they're in the process of getting 356 thousand signatures yeah. to be able to put this initiative on the ballot. And this is a direct response to the the potential legislation or the legislation that was introduced about this. That was Energy. already has taken this right. out of the local out of yeah. the local districts. So I'm a big proponent of that um, initiative to get that on the ballot. Right. And so that's that's one thing that's going on in Lansing and mm -hmm. I know I and and I you you can weigh in but the other thing that I think is a really big issue right now is that we are in the House, uh, it's 110 state re legislators, and we are at a tie, per se, of 54-54, because we had two Democrat legislators that ran for mayoral positions yeah. in Warren and in Westland, and they won those positions, so now we are at 54. And to literally pass any legislation at the House level, you have to have 56 yeses, yeah. and right now, Split right it's down the split. middle. And, you know, the whole <laughs> idea of this bipartisanship, yeah. we should be doing bipartisanship, but so far since November, we've had one bill that passed, and it was a memorial. And I think... Uh, well, <laughs> that's something. Yeah. I know. It's, I know you're working hard. Yeah. I know you're working hard. Do you... you you're on... What's your, what is your committee? Your uh, I'm appropriations, appropriations, which is budget. I, and everybody and that I know, knows me in Orion, they know that that's where I have, like focus to the point of ad nauseum <laughs> and now I've passed that baton on to you Kim <laughs> yeah I do get accused once in a while maybe once a week like I was just saying somebody will say okay Donnie if I, <laughs> and I say something and I'm fine with that really I am um, and yeah I, I it, so that's kind of a big committee to get on as a freshman yeah and I think it's because of being you know when you say I'm the treasurer they just assume that you have your MBA and Treasury and right. they, and your master's in finance and accounting and no I think that I'm called the practical business yeah small business person that I once was in real estate yeah. and you look at this budget and you're like I uh, this wouldn't fly at home why right. why does this fly at the state level or in yeah. uh, our local communities exactly you, you got to spend within your means yes, you do and you have to say no to your wants. <laughs> And the yes. squirrel that goes down looks really interesting, but when we really should be paying money to reliability, reliability. clean water, not pork, but potholes, uh, <laughs> not uh, programs, um, they should be uh, higher income, not uh, higher taxes. And so I, I'm just taking my sitting around the table at home <laughs> so insight and bringing it to right. Lansing. So speaking of programs, there was one that, that recently came around the water affordability. Thank you for um, bringing that up. Yeah, I wanted to bring that up because we did have, was on our one of our uh, meetings uh, recently. And so if, did, did you want to? Did you guys, did you guys sign that we resolution? Did. We did sign a resolution. And what was the resolution? The resolution was to um, oppose it okay. because, uh, the, so there's the water affordability legislation uh, wanting to add $2 minimum to each metered uh, home for water uh, to put into a big pot for the for the uh, Department of Human Services to use for water affordability um, could potentially go up to $3. So it's 24 to $36 per person who has, you know, water meter um, to put into this program. But I and again, it, you know how I am. I do a lot of research. I'm a, I'll grab onto something, and I want to make sure that when I'm, what I'm reading is correct. So I looked around, and you know, Oakland County has the RAP program that we do use in in our um, water and sewer department. We give that information to people. People are using it, so we do have a program already in Oakland County. So does Macomb. So does Wayne. 
so do many, many, many other communities, and they're successful and they're run through like uh, Easter Seals and um, uh, Olsa, I can't remember, Oakland Livingston something, O L H, I can't remember, anyway, O L H S A. So we, we looked at all of that, and, and I, I felt very comfortable. And again, I think it's that local thing, right? So for me, it was taking away, uh, like, when people in Orion need help from the RAP program or the other affordability program that goes through Oakland County, they're not going that far to get help. They're just going to Oakland County. It's right here, and we can help them, and we can talk to them at the counter. If you take that and take it up to Lansing, it, then it becomes just this log jam of you know I just didn't want it to be that way it's working I just I just wanted it to be left alone well and that's really that's again you're and you're talking about your community uh -huh. and people don't want to pay an extra two dollars when you right. already have a program Correct. and I think that what I had seen in the unemployment agency which is a state run insurance program for unemployed mm -hmm. and during COVID uh, that agency lost six billion dollars. So um, wow. of uh, people receiving unemployment that were technically not eligible for unemployment, yeah. and so they they um, unemployment was thirty billion dollars during that time, and s that they sent out for that insurance agency, and they lost six billion of it. I mean, we. We, if you, we, I lose six dollars. I'm like, I'm checking all my pants. And so I think that yeah. when you lose six billion, why would you give these two dollars? I think right off the bat, first year, it's what twenty million dollars that they will. I be, don't remember the number now, but at, it was a bit. And it doesn't go. So it's being the money's being taken out of your local community, right. and it's being given to other communities where they've set up programs to. Um, compensate for what people they say that they can afford and what their actual water bill so some communities are saying okay the average water bill is eighty dollars a month and um, uh, you only have to pay seventeen dollars a month and so they have a shortfall and so that shortfall and they've promised this has to come from somewhere and it's coming from these local mm -hmm. and it and it's not just people that are on the Great Lakes Water Authority mm -hmm. even if you have any water that's metered that has not connected to Detroit so like again I'm in Claire Michigan and I have a water tower and I'm paying water I will be given two dollars yeah. to programs that doesn't help my community yeah. uh, and you can't opt out that's the other part yeah. Yeah, you can't opt out. And that I think that was the other part of it, too. Um, and we do, by the way, part of our agreement with Great Lakes Water Authority, a portion of what we pay into it does go to, to this. So we, yes. we already do participate. Yes. And we already uh, send our local folks to Oakland County to get that help. And right. it's working because we do have people who use it. And, and you know, I had we, learned too that um, when the, the unused portion that Oakland County doesn't use, which mm -hmm. is almost half, and the unused portion that Macomb County doesn't use, they send that uh, RAP program excess to these communities that even need it. So we are already, already doing it. We are already doing that as well too. Yeah. So we are, people go, well, you got to help your neighbor. It's like, we are helping our neighbor. Yeah. So let's not reinvent the wheel on that one. So back right. to local control. Right local control yeah so um, and and speaking of local control our food fun drive yes that's what we, we're here yeah for. that's Sorry, what we're yeah, here yeah, for yeah. no thanks, yeah thanks Kim for bringing yes. it in <laughs> <laughs> no we um, so this is like I can remember before 2020 when we were coming in here and all the hallways were lined up and the kids were coming in and they had the milk crates and all of that um, this has been going on for 14 years here and I, I love how it continues to feed the community. Um, one thing I will say is that when we started the America in Bloom um, program, we brought them uh, around here to see the studios and talk about all the programs that we do here locally in terms of feeding people. And that was one of the reasons why we um, won Community Vitality that year is because of how well we actually do take care of our people here in Orion, um, including um, 
this food drive. Well, so, that's, yeah. and that's what it that's what it is. And that's the other thing yeah. is too is like we know what our needs are much greater than you know people at in Lansing know what our needs are. So, right. And so, and and I even know that there's like Love Inc. and yes. that that when you yep. are struggling, that you can call Love Inc. Mm -hmm. and say, where am I struggling? And if it's water or electricity, that they're there to help out and give yeah. the resources that people within the community donate to to be able to help our own. So mm -hmm. um, we're not in silos, but I just think that we just know better. So yeah, we do. We yeah. do know our people better. So I, 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 are we, are we still going here? I don't know. <laughs> we still. <laughs> Kim and I can yeah, talk all day. We could. The Kim and Donnie show. So if we're, <laughs> we're, we're gonna, we can go uh, on another. Well, um, as you know, like, okay, how many days do we have left until the end of tax season? That's been an interesting journey. Oh. <laughs> I'm learning a lot. Learning a lot. Doing oh. a lot of <laughs> research. You left me in a good place, oh, I have well, to say. Thanks, you Kim. really did. Yeah, it thanks. was, uh, yeah. yeah. It's been a lot of fun. And yeah. my favorite thing is when the, the dogs come to the counter. Oh, is that? I love that too. Me that was too. always. Is we all need emotional support, and those dogs coming in the front door are giving the whole township emotional support. I know. For and five minutes at a time. We have um, one kind of. Um, I'm a big fan of one, Molly. She's a an Irish wolfhound, and she belongs to our friend Scott Gabriel. And he brings her in. She's still a baby, but her um, chin goes right up on the counter, and it. she just sits there and stares at you. So I just want to say thank you very much to Donnie, Representative Donnie Steele, uh, for coming in and talking today about Lansing. Thank you very much. It's good to see you. Well, you too, Honorable Treasurer, <laughs> Miss Urbanowski. Thank you for doing your and plugging right into Orion and doing what's the best interest of Orion Township because that's we have servants' hearts. And we're here to serve our community to the best of our ability in the time in which we were given. So thank you for doing what you do. Thank you. Oh, okay. making me miss you. Yeah. And go what, fish. F yeah, go fish. <laughs> donate, donate. So we're going to go uh, next to a, a cooking instrument, uh, it's a cooking segment. This is the ONTV cooking show. I think we're doing spinach and artichoke puffs. Sounds good. Woo. <laughs> Welcome to the ONTV Cooking Show. I'm Tessa, and today I'm going to show you a quick and simple recipe on how to make spinach and artichoke puffs. I was in a scramble to try and find something to bring to Christmas Day, and this was just a really simple recipe to put together, and it saved my butt, and everyone ate it. So I think that's a win. So first thing we need is we need two cans of the Pillsbury Crescent Rolls. If you can find the ones that don't have the pre-cut lines, that's best, but if you cannot, then that's okay. We're going to show you how to work with that as well. Um, I usually get um, two of the spinach and artichoke dips, the family size, because you're going to want to scoop a hefty portion into each cup. And then we're going to top it with Parmesan cheese. And then for our supplies, um, a pre-greased uh, muffin tin so that we can make the cups. And then I'm going to try to use a pizza cutter today to cut the dough. And hopefully that works a little better than the knife. The knife kind of got stuck a little bit. So we're trying something new today. Um, first things first, we want to preheat our oven to 375 degrees. Um, that's the temperature that it says on the Pillsbury Crescent Roll tin. Um, yeah, and that'll just make sure they get nice and flaky. Delicious. I'm going to use this to spread. You want to spread out. You're going to start with one roll at a time. So we'll go ahead and spread it flat. And then we kind of don't want to rip it apart. But if it does, that's okay. We can, we can get it back together. I'll flatten it out and kind of stretch it out a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna scooch it close 
spacer. So what we're gonna do with these seams is we're just gonna pinch them together with our fingers to try and make uh, one solid sheet. And it's okay if it's not perfect because you're gonna be able to adjust them once you get them in the muffin tin as well. And they will rise as you bake them. Okay, so once you've got it kind of put together, uh, you're gonna wanna cut it into six even pieces. That way you can fill out the whole, all 12 spots on the muffin tin. So let's see. Two, four, six. I'm gonna do like little marks just to make sure that's gonna be about even. All right, and that looks about good. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut. If it's not completely even, that's okay. It's a very casual uh, dish that we're preparing. They'll still look nice and pretty. Okay, so I'm gonna set that aside. Oh, my oven is preheated. So then you're gonna take eat a square and you are going to put them inside of the muffin cup. You try to squish it down on the bottom. A little bit can be up top, that's okay. You just kinda wanna make like a solid cup for your dip to sit in. And we're gonna do that until we have filled up each one. I've seen people make this recipe even like into smaller cups, so they're like mini puffs. And that always sounded good too. But I kind of wanted a bigger, not just bite size, uh, something that could also be like a side dish if you wanted to. All right, and so in this one, you can see it's kind of splitting apart. I'm just gonna squish it together with my two fingers. Like I said, as it bakes, it's going to rise and fill in those gaps. Oops, all right. And they actually hold over pretty good too. If you have any leftovers to take home, my mother-in-law took a bunch home and had them for breakfast the next day. She said it was good, so. You might want to pop them in the oven to crisp them up a little bit. But I think if you microwaved it, they would also be good. All right. If you wanted to, too, if you don't like how much they are overlapping, you could cut off the excess dough. I think I've seen people actually measure out how much exactly would fit, but I just like to keep it. I don't like to think that much when I'm trying to come up with something in a hurry, so. This works just as well. Okay, so I have one more to do. Same thing as the first time. We'll unroll it, try to keep it as together as we can. All right, and then we're gonna pull together the seams. I had heard that they made them without these pre-cuts, but I could not find any in the store. And that would just make it even easier if you're really in a rush. Okay, so I'm gonna do the pre-cuts again to see if I can get them about even. Okay, that should be good. So I'll make my cuts. Yeah, the pizza cutter is working a lot better. I used a knife at home and it worked okay, but it would take some of the dough with it. 
All right. Let's go ahead and finish putting the rest of these in the tin. I think last year I also made a spinach and artichoke recipe, so it's definitely one of my favorite flavor combinations. And there's so much you can do with it. It really goes with a lot of stuff. Pinch the steams up so that they're not, there's not going to be a big hole on the bottom. All right, and then we got one more. Okay, well, those are looking pretty good. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a pretty healthy, like big spoonful of the dip and fill each of the cups. It didn't take the full two the last time I made it. It took about one and a half of these containers. Um, and it just really depends on how much you wanna put in. So like about this much, I'll drop it in there and I'll just kind of even it out in there. And I didn't find that the, the dip, it didn't affect the cooking process at all, which was nice. When I first did this, I was a little worried that it would make it too wet or something, make it have to cook longer, but it didn't really affect it. Put a little more in that first cup. All right. And you just kind of eyeball it to see if it looks right. Okay, so, yep, it'll be about one and a half this time as well. Gonna add a little more to some of these other ones, top it off. Okay, all set there. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a little bit of Parmesan cheese and sprinkle it on top. So that way it'll get nice and melty on the top when we bake it. I never have too much cheese, especially Parmesan. Okay, so once we've topped it with our cheese, now it's time for us to bake it. So we are gonna put this in the oven for about nine to 12 minutes. It's gonna depend on how your oven is. So let me pop these in the oven real quick. All right, so while those bake, we are gonna take a quick break and when we come back, we're gonna see how they turned out. Orion Neighborhood Television is your community media outlet. Our mission is to empower community members and groups to create, communicate, and connect through television and video production. For more than 35 years, ONTV has offered video production classes to residents of all ages and provides them with the equipment and facilities to produce their own programs. 
Not only are residents encouraged to produce programs, but ONTV staff produces programs that promote local nonprofits and community groups like the Chamber of Commerce, the Orion Township Public Library, and the Lake Orion Lions Club, to name a few. The staff ventures out into the community to cover events like parades, festivals, concerts, and high school sports. ONTV has provided the equipment and staffing to televise township and village meetings live and has provided the video equipment that Lake Orion High School students use as they prepare for a career in broadcasting. ONTV's podcast studio and training give producers an opportunity to educate and entertain listeners. To sign up for classes or for more information, call 248-393-1060 or visit orionontv.org. Welcome back. So I just took them out of the oven and they look like they're about done. Um, nice and brown and the cheese is all melty. Um, they took closer to 12 minutes rather than the nine minutes in this oven. So like I said, you're just gonna wanna keep a close eye on them to make sure they don't overcook. So let's go take a look at what they look like. All right, they smell really good. And there you have it. They're nice and brown from the, um, the crescent roll, and then the cheese is melted on top, and they just smell really tasty. So you're going to want to let them sit for a couple minutes at least, but you probably want to let them cool off a little bit before you try to take them out of the tin. That way they just hold their shape a little better and they don't fall apart on you. But other than that, they're ready to serve. You could also put them in the refrigerator and then pop them in the oven to reheat them if you want to serve them later. But yeah, this was a very easy appetizer to bring, and I think guests will love them, especially if you want to make them for something like the Super Bowl coming up. So thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time. All right, live here in the lobby here. Matt is going live on Facebook right now, trying to get donors. We're live, live. We did this last year. It was a disaster, and I think it, I think it works. It's a fun Does it work? Disaster, though. It's a fun disaster. So it's, we're live on Facebook. They're live on Facebook. We're on Cablecast, uh, or let's say AT&T U-verse Channel 99 and Comcast Channel 10. And our websites, live streams all over the place. So we're on Roku, H, uh, Apple TV, we're on Amazon Fire TV. Uh, CBS, no, because we're not CBS. But we are here for the food drive, here for fish. Goal is $6,000. A lot of talking going on. I don't know if I can do combo. $6,000 is the goal. We just had a $50 donation while we're in the uh, online, while we were on uh, our uh, cooking show break with Tessa, who was cooking that uh, very yummy. Uh, so, uh, so it, was, it was great. <laughs> Uh, so, yeah, we got a $50 donation to our charity GoFundMe. Make sure you hop on at OrionOnTV.org, click on that Food Drive logo, and make sure you get those donations in right now. Our collection goal for cash is $6,000, and so far we've had some good news this morning from uh, Canterbury Village. They're going to do some matching funds. Yeah, yeah, our good friend Mr. Keith Aldridge over there at Canterbury is uh, donating. He's out of the frame. Come this I'm way. out, so wait. Live, live. Oh, live, live. Hello, live, live. <laughs> Um, so, uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Aldridge has uh, graciously put up a thousand dollar donation for matching funds. That means I need you guys to kick up some money and uh, help us get those thousand dollars, get that thousand dollars from Keith. So, any donations you mention, uh, Canterbury Village, you can go live, and uh, or I mean, you can you can even <laughs> you can message me and you can write a check to ONTV for that or or, or write to Orion. Orion Fish. We just want it to go right to Oxford Orient yep. Fish. We don't want to have them have have them cash it. And so Oxford Orient Fish make checks payable, and uh, and then we've got a match, so we can raise a lot more money. Uh, the food needs in our community, believe it or not, are not dissipating. 
Yep. There is a need. Um, this morning we do a food truck every Monday, and we had about 350 families out for food. And so uh, it is very important that we make sure we take care of our neighbors, and you guys are a key part of it. Wait, you want to say something? No, I'm just saying that they're waving checks. They, we do. Yes. Uh, credit cards uh, at the charity GoFundMe. We have check. Donnie's got her checkbook out, and Kim's got. She's waving some uh, green backs. So, it, it's very good. You can donate all ways. You can even come to the studio at 1349 Joslin Road here at the Orion Center, and donate in person. 100% of all donations go to the uh, food pantry. On TV keeps none of it. It's just a pass through. Comes in, goes out to those in need. So uh, let's see. How can you donate? Well, oh, we want to fill the production van. I don't know if we have a graphic for that. Uh, who wants to see my face anymore on TV? No one. So here we go. Hey, fill our production van. <laughs> Uh, drop off your donations, non-perishable food items at 1349 Joslin Road at the Orient Center uh, Monday through Friday from 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. and Friday from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. We are collecting those donations and we're going to box them up and we're going to send them off to uh, the food pantry for those in need. Now we hear there are certain items that we like to have uh, donated that are requested this time of year by uh, fish and you can see we got canned pineapple, canned mandarin oranges and canned fruit chilies, beef, stews, uh, sloppy joe mix, and meal prep items uh, like slop, or hamburger helper is one of them. Uh, ketchup, mustard, uh, canned chicken, chunky soups, uh, baked beans, taco shells, cake mixes, feminine hygiene products are always needed, and school supply items are always uh, welcome as well. We had a nice case of uh, pens uh big pens uh, dropped off as a donation for school items so those are items always changing at fish always looking for uh, uh seasonal items that uh, to get you through the cold winter months and help restock those shells after the holiday rush so that's where we are here uh, tessa i'm stuck here i'm not sure where we're going next Sponsors, let's talk about our sponsors. Here we go, our sponsors for today. Take a look at this video of all of our uh, generous sponsors for this afternoon. Dowling Buick GMC has been serving the Lake Orion community for more than 40 years. We here at ONTV would like to thank them for helping to sponsor our food drive benefiting Oxford Orion Fish. Of course, giving back to the community is not a new concept for the dealership. Galling Buick GMC hosts several car shows throughout the year, with each one helping a different community organization. We raise money for various charity groups throughout the year. Each show has, has a charity. This, this uh, is the uh, Orion uh, Veterans Memorial down here on Lapeer Road, uh, raising money for that memorial today um, and throughout the year we pick different charities and we try to uh, you know mix it up and, and keep the money in the community I can tell you that last year with our shows we raised almost thirty thousand dollars it's a community we all live in and I live here in Lake Orion as well and it's a community that supports us and our business we always want to try and give back as best that we can I'm blessed as far as having great employees and great customers and all the rest, but it's also a blessing to, to be in a business that can also be considered your hobby and your fun part of it as well, because I love cars. And every year, Galling Buick GMC hosts Lake Orion's biggest party of the year. The who's who of Lake Orion are invited to come out to the Holly Jolly Folly, a massive fundraiser that helps make the Orion Lighted Parade an annual spectacular that old and young alike look forward to every holiday season. You know what, it's fun. It, you know, the bottom line is it's fun and it's really fun to do things in our community, for our community, and uh, this is really what it's all about, right? It, it becomes grassroots stuff, the community comes together, and um, it's it's really great. And you know we've been through a couple, couple tough years, and and this is this is a celebration coming out of some of that stuff. I can't thank John Cooper and Gollings enough. They are not only the presenting sponsor of the parade, they also pay for everything here. Um, so it's a it's a great event. I know John Cooper loves to do it, and we love having it here. And the family here at Gollings, I mean, we couldn't have done it without them. I mean, we had. Our oil change kids, our mechanics, uh, guys in the body shop, we're all here today setting up, tearing down, cleaning up. Uh, can't have enough help from the Tally Gardens, they're doing a great job. So we love it and we love doing it here at Gollings. Um, so as my Golling cap is, as far as I know, we're going to be doing this for a while. 
For more information, visit CowlingBuickGMC.com. And again, we'd like to thank them for helping to support the Oxford Orient Fish Food Pantry. The history, well, it was uh, back in uh, 1985, uh, Northern was founded, um, and uh, I purchased it um, in uh, early 2004, so it was uh, almost 20 years old when I purchased it, and uh, that puts us at, uh, what if I have that right, 36 years, I think, uh, 36, 37 years now that uh, Northern's been serving uh, the uh, Orion uh, community as well as surrounding communities. Times are changing, and uh, I'm, I'm a big believer in that if we don't change with them, um, then uh, then we're going to be left behind. And so, uh, yeah, you know, when I bought the store, it was uh, located there in uh, the plaza next to OPA, uh, which is uh, that plaza is most known for. And, um, and we were there for a long time. Um, and then um, I had the opportunity to buy a building on 24, which I, I did with the, uh, the intention of going to a, a more full service, high end, kind of a destination flooring store. And the reality is at the same time I was doing that, the industry was changing. And the industry was changing to a lot of online sellers and to uh, the big box stores. Uh, really the strength of the big box stores has become um, very challenging for independent retailers. And many independent retailers went away. So at that point, I uh, made the decision to change up the model. Um, and it was painful because I we had a beautiful space there and um, still that great reputation. but. Um, I, I believed that we needed to, uh, to evolve. And now you know, the great thing is with the floor trader, the addition of the floor trader, we have a lot more space here. We have uh, over 100,000 feet of flooring in stock and we have better buys than anybody. I mean, any big box store, um, when it comes to quality for price, there is nobody that can touch us and especially our independent uh, retail friends and, and big box and you know the Costco's and all of them. So we've created a destination that gives uh, customers what they need regardless of what end of the spectrum they're on in terms of their needs for flooring and um, and i couldn't have done that in that location so as much as it hurt uh, we, we did what we had to to be relevant uh, for today's customer and they're they're why we're here so if we aren't changing for them then i think uh, that we're making a mistake um, i love what we do and we're proud of our business but the reality is um, uh, i'm a believer that it is our responsibility as a business in a small community to um, to take care of our community, and um, and so you know we started uh, many many years ago with um, a few efforts like we used to do packages for the troops when the uh, we had a lot of people overseas and we did that in honor of one of our locals that uh, passed uh, Raymond Plower who uh, was uh, lost his life in the the conflict in Iraq and uh, and so back in those days we were there for that family and we we built a partnership with them and then. It just kind of evolved to any time there was a need, we tried to jump in and, and quite frankly, I spend uh, uh, way more of my time doing that at this point personally than I do on our business and I leave that to our staff, uh, which is, uh, you know, we're real proud of them as well. Um, but the reality is there's a lot of needs. Um, we also are collecting food for, for this food drive and I'm looking forward to being a part of that as well and helping to make sure that you guys meet the goal. Um, so there are so many needs in our community and, and I'd say more than more than ever, at least it feels that way. And so um, we uh, we believe it's our responsibility and duty to be a part of that. And, and quite frankly, we encourage um, all of you out there uh, to patron the businesses. Cause when I, when I do anything in charity, we reach out to all my local business friends and there are many of them that come through time after time after time and are here for us to help us be able to take care of people when they're in need in these tragedies. And um, I would encourage you to, to follow me, follow what we're doing in those businesses and support those businesses in the community. Because the reality is, if, if I didn't have those businesses to lean on, I couldn't do what we do as a team here and as a team in the community to help others. So we, we need businesses that give back and um, we just uh, really encourage our, our locals to keep that in mind when you're making purchases. If you're buying from a big box store, not that they're bad people, but they probably aren't doing a lot in our local community. And, uh, and there's a lot of businesses that, you know, don't focus on the community. And we just think that uh, your money would be better spent in helping those that help make our community the great, amazing place that it is.
You guys need to drive up here with some food, better yet, drive up with some cash. And if you're a company, you need to call in and you need to, you need to donate some money to help keep this food pantry stocked for all of our guests. So I challenge all of you, join us in this fight. And, uh, and if everybody does a little bit, it's really not that challenging. And we can, we can do uh, great things together. On the morning of Friday, January 20th, local dignitaries were invited to take a sneak peek of the brand new Meyer grocery store located on M24 near Clarkston Road. This new concept focuses on the essentials, allowing shoppers to zip in and zip out. So this building is about 90,000 square feet, and we want to make sure that customers are able to get in and out quickly and still have that value, um, whether you forgot spices, or you want to come in and do your entire need for the whole week. So um, not only do we have food and we have fresh, we also have a full pet department. We have baby necessities and we have our uh, entire HBC area along with a uh, pharmacy and a drive through Meyer broke ground on the new location in January of 2022 on the site where Kmart once stood. The Lake Orion location is one of two stores that opened on January 26th. The other is located in Macomb Township. In addition to the Meyer brands you're used to seeing, the stores will have a heavy emphasis on locally made products as well. Uh, we have some local offerings. We have uh, some of them uh, we were highlighting today was Cook's Dairy Farm, uh, Sprout Bake and Buddy's Pizza. Uh, but we have a lot of local offerings and again, we're just so excited to be part of the community. We are so appreciative of Meyer. You know, their commitment to supporting local food producers is phenomenal and I have to give a huge shout out to Mary Kimbrough who's the store director here she personally selected my product from a pitch that we were able to do uh, back in last February um, and she knew we were here in Lake Orion she tasted our product she loved it and so I'm just very appreciative that she gave us this opportunity to have our product here and it means a ton to us as a small business that's a startup you know trying to get our product out there it's difficult you know it's a big world with all of the big names that are out there um, so to have this opportunity means a lot on thursday january 26th the store opened its doors to the public at 6 a.m later that morning Maya representatives gathered at the rear of the store to celebrate the occasion with a ribbon cutting ceremony they were joined by Meyer co-chair and CEO Hank Meyer, the grandson of Hendrick Meyer, who founded the supermarket chain in 1934. Grand openings are always a thrill, but for the last 60 years, the main stores we've been opening have been our big Meyer super centers, for lack of a better term. And at the same time that we love that format and having everything under one roof, we also recognize that people want their groceries conveniently, and it's hard to put those big stores that close together and really serve everybody. So this is a new, in many ways, a return to our roots of a predominantly food store, but with a spectacular grocery and pharmacy and assortment that we think people will love and that will be more convenient to shop for a lot of our customers than our big stores are. The new Lake Orion store is one of more than 240 stores located in six states, with approximately half located in Michigan. Headquartered in Walker, Michigan, near Grand Rapids, the chain pioneered the concept of super centers, combining groceries, clothing, hardware, and more. For more information, you can call 877-363-4537 or visit Meyer.com. All right, uh, Ian Locke, uh, Matt Pfeiffer here in the Owen TV uh, lobby during the 14th annual Live 12 to 2, our little uh, live lunch look-in here for the uh, 14th annual Food Drive for Fish. The Food and Fun Drive rolls along. Uh, we have a little bug that we're going to put up on the screen that shows you our current donation collection totals. Our collection goal is $6,000 once again this year. And so far, so good. We've had some donations online. want to thank Kim and uh, Donnie for coming in and uh, offering their donations up to help fish. Yeah, they, well, they are always, uh, always helping. They're both incredible uh, local citizens and public servants, and uh, we're, I'm thankful for both of them, and, and they're just good people. They're good friends of mine, uh, as I know they are of yours, and yep. they're just they're good people, just like you guys here at ONTV. Well, we're, we're community-centric. Without us focusing on our community, why are we here, right? right. I mean, it's, it's we always call us, like, uh, the Own TV studio is, like, a very expensive library. You come in here, you can check out equipment, tripods, cameras. It's not just a book. 
Yeah, sorry I didn't get that camera back to you. I just kind of, it's been in the back of my car. And I... Well, there was a police report filed. No, I'm joking, completely joking. But yes, we're here. We're trying to collect that $6,000. We're here all week. We have to remind everybody this is just the first day. And every day this week, we're going to be here from 12 to 2 with special programming, live music. Tomorrow is Community Media Day. So uh, Oxford OCTV is part of our par partnership yeah, again this year. There too. Great yeah. folks doing great work. Uh, uh, you guys always do a great job with the program, and I love being a part of it, and I'm excited to come back Friday and help uh, close it up uh, at the end of the week, um, hopefully with great news that we have exceeded the goals. That's that's our mission. Absolutely, and we know we, we've exceeded our goals every year of the 14 years, so come on, you guys. Let's get on it. Uh, but OCTV, uh, been in the community for close to 40 years, and uh, we partner with them on programming, games, you name it. Uh, and you can see this program live up on OCTV's uh, Spectrum Cable Channel. I think it's 191. I'm guessing. Uh, uh, hey, I got it right. Just I read this. I read the script a long time. Yeah, there you go. Uh, head over to OxfordCommunityTV.us for their program schedule. There you can find all their programming from meet, uh, government meetings, uh, school board, and the like. Uh, Wildcat sports, talk shows, news, and events, uh, very centered on Addison and Oxford townships. Yes. Okay. So once again, our collection goal is $6,000. We're trying to get that uh, this week, and we know we can get it. Tracy, you can come on by. Uh, and we want to thank Culver's. So yes. Culver's hey, is, helped us out. We got our butter burgers thank here. Thank you, Joe, and the butter burgers. And the Joe's. Yep. Go on. Oh, well, yes, you're very. Thank you. So, uh, uh, Joe, uh, or help me out here. Joe. Um, yeah, Joe Zimmer. Yeah, he's. Tracy. We got a. Joe's a good-looking guy with the funny glasses. He's always live TV. Yeah. Joe Zimmer, a longtime supporter of the food drive, has been feeding our cast and crew uh, since almost day one since he opened Culver's. Yeah, so now they've got two Culver's in Orion. They are a true Orion uh, uh, dynasty. You know, I don't know a lot of people don't know. I used to work for Joe back in the very old days uh, when I was 15. I was I uh, worked at that big boy up there. But really? yeah, now they've got these two great Culver's open here in Orion, and they are always right chomping at the bit to help in their community and that's what we need you folks out there to do um chomp at the bit to help us uh raise some money and i'm looking especially at you businesses we need some hundred dollar donations would be great you feed a lot of people with a hundred bucks and then we've got that match coming from keith over at canterbury which means that hundred turns into 200 and so we are really looking for your donations today help us help our community and make sure that nobody goes without Absolutely. And that was a great announcement to kick off the day at noon uh, that Matt brought in with uh, Keith coming on board again this year, longtime sponsor and friend of the food drive. So we're moving on to more programming. So all this week we have special programming. You can tune in in the mornings from 8 a.m. almost, I think, 24-7. We have uh, our sponsors on our, uh, edited onto some of our evening programming. We're going to have a live basketball game from uh, Lake Orion High School tomorrow. I think it's a women's varsity game. Oh, that's cool. Right. So they're gonna, uh, the students from Lake Orion High School are going to be pledging and promoting the food drive as the game goes on, which is great. So we have the whole community involved. Uh, but, yes, like we mentioned, we have special programming all week, and today is – Kind of like a DIY, community-based cooking, a lot of recipes. So we're going to toss you to a recipe that uh, Tracy made, Tracy I, Marsh. I need to cook. I need to, uh, we've talked about this. I want to come in and do a cooking session. We're right here. We have I'm cameras right. mounted. I am an amazing. No, I'm, I'm pretty good cook. <laughs> pretty good. I almost believed in there for a second. Oh, no, but anyway, I'm this good. is chicken gnocchi. Great well, recipe. Gnocchi's not chicken. It's probably got chicken no. with the gnocchi. The gnocchi noodles or yeah, gnocchi. dumplings. Yeah, dump. Well, yeah, it's like a dumpling, an Italian dumpling. It's awesome. <laughs> But this recipe is great. Uh, so we have a, a next run of uh, from the Owen TV kitchen. Let's pass you off to that show. Take a look and enjoy the recipe. See you in a bit. Hello and welcome to the ONTV Cooking Show. My name is Tracy and today I am going to be making chicken gnocchi soup. 
Chicken gnocchi is an Italian soup that we are going to copycat from the Olive Garden. So if you're into that, you're going to be into this recipe. So first thing we do is we're going to just saute our vegetables first. We've got one onion, uh, one celery stalk, a half a cup to a cup of carrots, and some minced garlic. So we've got the oil going already, and we're just going to go ahead and start sauteing our onions and vegetables. So this is going to take a couple of minutes here, but we're going to put our celery in here. And then we're going to put our carrots in here. And we're going to get everything all mixed in. So, so chicken gnocchi soup is a really good soup in the wintertime. And today it actually be, ends up being one of the coldest days of the year. So I usually use um, chopped garlic, but today, just to save some time, I'm going to go ahead and use the minced garlic, and we need about mm, two teaspoons of the minced garlic. Okay. So we're just going to go ahead and saute these a little bit here. So what I did ahead of time already was um, I took two chicken breasts that I boiled and then I shredded the chicken up. Um, I took about a cup of uh, baby spinach and I kind of deveined that and chopped that up a little bit too. Now usually, I know I threw some shredded carrots in the pot. But usually what I do is take some little baby carrots and I just chop up the baby carrots so I actually have pieces of carrot in the soup. But just to save some time, again today, I did the um, shredded. So, which is really what the recipe calls for, but I like to have a little bit, little bits of pieces of carrot in my soup. All right, this is almost done. We're just sauteing until the onions are a little bit translucent. And then we're going to throw the throw the chicken. Um, I just use um, like an organic chicken broth from um, any grocery store you can find. Um, the, there's like, I think, four cups in one box, and that's all the recipe calls for is just four cups. So we're going to also put in some thyme, and there's going to be one um, teaspoon of thyme. I think the recipe is going to be on our web page too, so you'll get all this information. All right. Okay, so... Um, this is about one pound of chicken, just to let you know. It's about 16 ounces, but it's all shredded. Two chicken breasts um, is all you need, really. And you could basically get a rotisserie chicken if you really wanted to cheat and use a rotisserie chicken and just tear that baby up. So... Let's put in our chicken broth. Now you can use um, low sodium or whatever you would like. But again, it calls for four cups. And this one box of broth is four cups. So that works out perfectly. Oops. Okay. So now we're going to put in our um, one teaspoon of thyme along with our chicken broth.
and our chicken, and then we're good. So we're going to stir this up. We're going to bring it to a boil. And then we're going to let it simmer. So after I get this going just a tad, we're going to add in our gnocchis. So gnocchis you can buy at any grocery store, and they look like this. And what they are are just basically Italian potato pastas. Um, so this is really not a gluten-free um, recipe of soup. However, what I did just find recently was um, some chickpea gnocchis. So if you really want to do a gluten-free um, chicken gnocchi soup, you can these days because I just recently found this in the grocery store. So you can get um, chickpeas instead of potato and it will be a gluten-free recipe. But here we just want to put these in slowly. Kind of break them apart a little bit. And then we're going to let this boil. Dropped one out of the pot. One escaped. Can't have that. Okay, here. There we go. All right. So we're going to stir these into the pot. All right. So everything is pretty much in the pot. Um, we have to maybe boil it um, and then simmer it for about 10 minutes after that. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back and we'll add in the last few ingredients and then have some soup. So we'll be right back. Orion Neighborhood Television is your community media outlet. Our mission is to empower community members and groups to create, communicate, and connect through television and video production. For more than 35 years, ONTV has offered video production classes to residents of all ages and provides them with the equipment and facilities to produce their own programs. Not only are residents encouraged to produce programs, but ONTV staff produces programs that promote local nonprofits and community groups like the Chamber of Commerce, the Orion Township Public Library, and the Lake Orion Lions Club, to name a few. The staff ventures out into the community to cover events like parades, festivals, concerts, and high school sports. ONTV has provided the equipment and staffing to televise township and village meetings live and has provided the video equipment that Lake Orion High School students use as they prepare for a career in broadcasting. ONTV's podcast studio and training give producers an opportunity to educate and entertain listeners. To sign up for classes or for more information, call 248-393-1060 or visit orionontv.org. Welcome back, and our soup is just about done. We just have a couple more ingredients that we need to put in the pot, and then we're ready to eat. Um, so the last two things that we need to do is we want to put in two cups of half and half, and then we want to put in about a cup of the uh, baby spinach all chopped up. So we're going to start with this real quick. We're just going to... Pour this in slowly. We've got the pot on simmer. So what we did was we let the pot boil, and then once it came to a boil, we put it on simmer for about 10 minutes. So it really doesn't take that long um, to cook. It's pretty quick, pretty simple, pretty easy. And then we're going to put in some spinach and let that soak in there too. We'll see how that goes. And the spinach will just kind of melt in the pot. So now at this point, um, you just kind of want to simmer it for about a couple minutes and then we are ready to go. 
So I also put in some salt and pepper um, to taste. Um, and then you can salt and pepper it again um, if you'd like more uh, once the soup is done. So also an option when the soup is done is uh, Parmesan cheese for anybody that likes cheese. But this is gonna, this is gonna just simmer for a few more minutes here. Okay, so the soup has been simmering for a couple of minutes now and we're gonna go check the final product and scoop some out. So follow me. And we're gonna check this out here. And it's looking pretty good. I think we've got us some gnocchi soup here. So I'm going to scoop a little bit out so you can see it a little bit better into the soup bowl. And get all these little gnocchis in here. And it's looking pretty good. So here is our final product of gnocchi soup with all our vegetables and some chicken and chicken broth and the gnocchis. So I love Parmesan cheese. So I'm going to put a little bit of Parmesan cheese on mine. Actually, I'm going to put a little bit more. That's how much I like it. And we are good to go. And so this is what chicken gnocchi soup looks like from the Olive Garden. <laughs> so if you'd like this recipe, you can get it on our webpage, and I hope you enjoy. Thank you for joining us today. Bye. All right, back here in the ONTV studio for the 14th annual ONTV Food Drive and Fun Drive for Fish. I'm Ian Locke, Executive Director here at Ori Neighborhood Television. I want to thank you for tuning in to this 12 to 2 p.m. lunch break uh, to celebrate fish and to raise funds uh, during this 14th annual Food Drive. Our collection goal this year is $6,000. $6, and we just had some uh, Donnie Steele was in, Rep Steele was in, and Kim Ranowski, our treasurer of Orion Township. And between the two of them, they graciously donated, I think it was $300 to our goal. So way to go. Thank you so much for uh, our friends um, at Orient Township and Donnie Steele working hard for us in Lansing. Uh, but again, we're back in the studio. Why are we here? We're here to support fish and everything they do. We need to restock those shells after the holiday rush. This time of year, we decided to uh, have the f uh, food drive with fish, to, like we said, to help restock those shelves. And now more than ever, we need to get resources into the food pantry. Um, we know that inflation really hit uh, those in need very, very hard. And uh, we do have news from fish that said that during the holidays, due to the rush and the need, that they actually had to turn some families away. So that's the first time we've heard that in a number of years. So. The, the need is there and it's very important. So before we move on to the food drive, we have some special guests in here we're gonna to go to in just a second because we have a very important announcement to make. Uh, but we're gonna to go to say thank you to all of our sponsors for today's edition of the food drive here on Monday. All of us at Owen TV would like to thank our corporate sponsors for their generous donations. Today's portion of the 2024 Owen TV Food Drive is brought to you by Madison Heights Plumbing and Heating Supply, located at 719 East Mandolin Avenue in Madison Heights. The family owned business has been serving the Detroit metro area for over 30 years. Madison Heights Plumbing and Heating Supply is supporting the food drive for a second year and is a five-day sponsor. In addition to the ONTV Food Drive, they proudly support other charitable events and organizations, such as Toys for Tots, Bottomless Chest, and St. Jude's Children's Hospital. For more information, give them a call at 248-588-4690.
or visit their website, madisonheightsplumbingsupply.com. Northern Wholesale Flooring, located at 118 Indian Wood Road in Lake Warren. Northern Wholesale Flooring has been an active member of the community for over 38 years. They are a returning partner of the ONTV Food Drive and are a five-day sponsor. For more information, you can visit their website, nflooring.com. Ohana Wealth Advisory. This is Ohana Wealth Advisory's second year supporting the food drive, and they are a five-day sponsor. For more information, you can give them a call at 248-246-8080. Kroger, located at 3097 South Baldwin Road in Orion Township. This year, Kroger is a five-day sponsor, thanks to a generous $500 donation to the Oxford Orient Fish Food Pantry. For more information about Kroger, visit their website, kroger.com, or give them a call at 248-393-0765. Meyer of Lake Orion, located at 1107 South Lapeer Road in Lake Orion. Meyer is a year-round supporter of the Oxford Orion Fish Food Pantry, collecting food pantry donations through their Simply Give program. They are a five-day sponsor of the ONTV Food Drive with a charitable $500 contribution. For more information, visit their website, Meyer.com. M3 Investments, located at 990 North Main Street in Royal Oak. Having a plan that is designed around your goals and financial situation can help you successfully navigate the risks you are likely to face. Whether you're just starting out, thinking about retirement, or just retired, Christine can help. For more information about M3 Investments, you can give them a call at 248-543-3400. Galling Buick GMC, located at 1491 South Lapeer Road in Lake Orion. Galling is a longtime supporter of the food drive, returning this year as a five-day sponsor. For more information, you can visit their website at gallingbuickgmc.com. Lucky's Natural Foods, located at 101 South Broadway Street in Lake Orion. The natural and organic grocery store has been serving the Lake Orion community for 50 years. Lucky's Natural Foods is a one-day sponsor of the ONTV Food Drive with a $200 donation to the Oxford Orion Fish Food Pantry. For more information about Lucky's, you can visit their website, luckysnaturalfoods.com or you can give them a call at 248-693-1209. And Palazzo de Bacci, located at 4291 Lapeer Road in Lake Orion. They are returning sponsors of the ONTV Food Drive with a generous donation of $200. The local Italian restaurant is celebrating their 20th anniversary. Palazzo de Bacci gives customers a chance to play a game of bocce ball while they eat. For more information, you can visit their website, palazzodebacci.com. In the fall of 1974, John and Judy Luckovitz opened Lucky's Produce Plants and Flowers in downtown Lake Orion. In 1993, the couple's oldest daughter, Tanya, purchased the business, and it continues to thrive to this day as Lucky's Natural Foods. In 2024, Lucky celebrates 50 years of serving the community, making them Lake Orion's oldest continuously operating business. Well, my parents, John and Judy, both moved back from California, originally from Michigan, and they um, opened up the store as a produce store. It turned into more of a health food store as years went on. We added supplements and healthy groceries. We have fresh Amish turkeys that are grown around the Midwest area, and have no antibiotics and hormones and it's a very popular thing. We do quite a quite a show with our turkeys every year. Well, the community has been very supportive and very helpful. Um, they support us, they are loyal to us, um, and I think that uh, we've been well accepted being that we're here 50 years. Do you have any special events planned this year? We do, so pay, stay tuned because we don't we haven't rolled out everything yet, but every month we're going to have giveaways and we'll have some events coming up as well. 
Now here you are uh, returning to support Owen TV's food drive. Why is it important to you to be part of that? Well, nutrition has always been very important to us here and offering good nutrition to our community. Health ha is our backbone. So um, helping the community to have food, which everybody should have basic needs like food, is, is important to us. And finally, just what do you want to say to this community for supporting? Thank you so much to everybody for, for supporting Lucky's for all these years. We really appreciate it and we love serving you. We here at Owen TV would like to thank Lucky's Natural Foods for supporting the food drive, benefiting the Oxford Orion Fish Food Pantry. For more information, you can call 248-693-1209 or visit luckysnaturalfoods.com. Palazzo de Bacci opened its doors in June of 2004. That means the owners, staff, and the community will be celebrating 20 years of great food and fun in 2024. The owner is Anthony Battaglia, and uh, he had this idea of uh, just having a couple bocce courts with pizzas and sandwiches with some friends, and uh, during the planning stages, uh, it turned out to be a 32,000 square foot building, uh, <laughs> and a little bit more than just uh, some pizzas and uh, sandwiches, so full, full Italian cuisine. We have our day leagues here, uh, Tuesday, Thursday day leagues, uh, which is uh, primarily seniors, but uh, uh, of course we have some that can be a little bit younger. You don't necessarily have to be a senior if you're looking for something to do during the daytime. And uh, uh, it's a great thing, uh, community oriented, it's where you have people just uh, uh, coming around from, you know, different parts of Lake Orion area, uh, Auburn Hills, Rochester, Oxford, of course, you know, just the different areas where people get together and it's a social game. It's a great game where people you can play, have fun, and uh, and socialize. I hear the food's pretty good. Can someone just pop in for lunch or dinner? Absolutely, yes, absolutely. That's another great thing about the day leagues is uh, they run from 10.30 to 1 p.m. And afterwards, uh, we have a good percentage of the players that uh, pop in for lunch. And we have dinner as well, too, with our uh, evening leagues that we have as well. Our customers are some of the best customers that, that, that you could have. Okay, where I, I've seen uh, places over in different parts of the country, uh, even different parts of the state, and, and you know, we're blessed to have the type of customers that, uh, that we have here. Uh, uh, I, especially the last couple years, you know, during the hard times, uh, our customers have been fantastic. Try to come up with different events, different things that can excite the community a little bit, like a, an international bocce tournament, for example, that we had last year. If you're looking for something fun to do, this is family oriented uh, with friends, uh, you know, a night out to dinner, anything. There's so many different aspects that we can provide uh, for the community. And, uh, you know, we try to provide as good of a value as we can. And, uh, you know, with our portion sizes, the quality of our food, and, uh, and just the atmosphere in general, I, I, I think we, we can provide a lot of uh, smiles. We're also an event space here as well, too. So if you're looking for uh, uh, rehearsal dinners, birthday parties, retirement parties, all kinds of parties, whatever you'd like, you know, we, we provide that as well, too. Phone number is 248-371-9987. Uh, we also, you can look us up at our website, palazzodebacci.com. All right, back here in the ONTV studios for the 14th annual ONTV Food Drive for Fish. Uh, what can we say about our sponsors? Without their help, we would never reach our collection goal of $6,000. Well, we have a special guest, one of our sponsors, one of our special sponsors here in the studio with us to, with a special announcement. It's really gonna knock your socks off. So I'm gonna send it over to Matt with, uh, with our guest. Who, are, who do we have in the studio with us today, Matt? Well, we have Bill and Pam. Bill and Pam uh, with uh, Madison Heights Plumbing and Heating Supply. And um, these guys are, uh, well, you guys are some of my favorite people around town, and we've only known each other for a few years, uh, and we met because of your generosity. Um, you guys reached out to me during uh, the Oxford crisis, and uh, you stepped up and helped, and then you've reached out with the food, uh, the food trucks and the different things, and you have made an unbelievable impact 
And uh, so first of all, thank you. Welcome. Thank you. I, I, uh, what is it that, uh, before we get to this, which uh, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm super excited about, but before we get to that, what is it that makes you um, do what you do? Why, because I, cause I, one of the things I like to do is try and um, get other people excited about getting involved in giving, and you guys uh, are so generous. Um, so could you tell me just a little bit about why, and um, um, yeah, just why you do it? It's fun. How's that for an answer? It's a great answer. No, there's a, there's a, this business, uh, it's my sister's in my business. We, this year's our 40, 40th year. Losing my voice, sorry. 40th year. Um, so we're going above and beyond what we normally do. But we've always been a tight family to where we share. If other people need help, we'll do it. I mean, there's... My daughter's in. My daughter's. I don't know if I'm allowed. My daughter's a major and a, a ranger in the army. So we're a real strong supporter of the USO. Mm -hmm. Thank you for your service. Uh, being a family of a, of somebody serving, and thank you to her for her service. Yeah, uh, my young, my my youngest son, my middle son, he what, helping people. He started as a EMT, went to be a paramedic. He was a 91 dispatcher for. Macomb for two years, and now he just became a sheriff. Wow. So he's, all the children have done well, you know, I mean, you know, can say you can push people in a certain direction. Service that's is, our job as service parents. is strong in your family. Well, I'll tell you, surprisingly enough, I'm going to tell you one story before Thank you get. Please. Just goes to show that this goes back hmm, 20 years. Our children and a lot of children in Lake Corps, and we all know how there's a lot of well-off families out here. And our children, we started to start to see the same thing where they had everything they needed. And we actually, the one year Habitat for Humanity had a, uh, you could actually sponsor a family yourself. You got in touch with them. You got the presents, you delivered it on Christmas, you went through the whole ordeal. So we did that with the four kids and it did nothing ever like it. Those children, for just the one house that we went up to, my son was nine, I think nine at the time. We go up to the door at this house, we go back to starting a lot of stuff and here comes this nine-year-old greeting my son at the door and the two of them are shaking hands. Hmm. And when you go in their house, you start to find out the people that really have nothing. They're, they're out there. There's a lot of them in Lake Orion that we don't even know about. We all know about a few on corners and, but they're out there. And even at the helping you with the food, the one couple of times we helped, I helped, it's during my work, I can't. But I was there and one car pulled up, and this kid literally, Mom, they have peanut butter this week. And he was like beside himself. This kid was really, and he said, I wonder if they have jelly. And they didn't have jelly. And I handed her five bucks. And I said, would you please go get this kid a thing of jelly <laughs> and make his day. Yeah, yeah. But uh, <laughs> you're, it's just, it's little things like that that make you, want to do more and other people are always they're willing to follow well, do I got time for one more because this one actually was really heart you guys you guys cut them off we're gonna have a problem yeah, we, no, really heart-wrenching okay. yeah. one of the family yeah one okay. of the families that we delivered to with the kids the one year uh, was in downtown Royal Oak uh, gentlemen we walked in the house it was an apartment the mother was in a full Death hospital. bed, hospital bed. That was their living room. The son lived in the, the one little bedroom. So we did all the stuff and the father invited uh, to sit down. So I go and I sit down on the couch and I'm like, <laughs> a spring came through. This is where this guy's living while his wife is ready to pass. She was crying the whole time. We went home, I couldn't live with myself. The next day I went and bought him a darn couch and delivered it. It's just those kind of things that people 
they're out there and they need help. And, the, and yeah. this is a great, a great way of touching a lot of people. Well, they're all around us, and one of the, one of the things. Um, thank you for sharing uh, yeah. those stories, and it, it kind of uh, it speaks to why your children are the way they are. And I think that's a good lesson for all of us. Um, um, I've, I've told this story a million times, so I'm going to try and tell it very, very quickly. But when I was a kid growing up here in Lake Orion, our house burned down. And when it burned, um, it was, uh, was 1982 in Keatington. Um, we had uh, uh, eight humans in the house, uh, two dogs and a cat. And we all got out alive. Uh, it was middle of the night, two in the morning, right before Christmas. Um, within a week or so, we were in a new rental house, and the community came out. And, and uh, we had food. We had clothes. We had a Christmas tree. We had gifts. Um, that quickly... And uh, it always struck me how amazing it was to live in a place where people would step up. And I was uh, very, very young, because I'm still very young. Um, I was very young in 82. Um, and, uh, but it stuck with me. And one of the things I like to remind people is when you start, you know, making this a part of your life to give back, mm -hmm. um, I feel selfish doing it. And I know you guys feel that way, because I see it in you, because we get so much out of it. And um, you get so much forgiving, you feel so good doing it. And when you see your kids, mine now, um, uh, some, you know, very involved in helping people and, and uh, have helped in a, a lot of the charities. When you raise your kids around that and you let them see you doing it, um, you're raising a next generation of givers. And uh, there is no question that our community is so strong because we have so many people who care and give. And um, if we all focus on, on doing a little bit, it only takes a little bit. And, uh, and then letting people see that you're doing a little bit to encourage others and, and to get that gift that we've gotten, mm -hmm. um, the world's a better place. So you guys are such an inspiration. I'm so thankful we became friends. And uh, I'm gonna open this check, uh, if you don't mind right oh. now. So this is um, from Madison Heights Plumbing and, uh, and Heating Supply. And um, uh, you guys have been incredibly generous in everything that pops up in the community. And um, so uh, I appreciate it. And it's, uh, well, this would be a biggest donation uh, this year. Uh, and I, I think it was the biggest donation last year because you guys did this for us last year. Well, I don't know if we need to show it there. $5,000. $5,000. Um, thank you so much for your generosity. Please, I, I haven't met your sister Please pass along to her the thank you, your kids, your family. You guys are great Lake Orion residents. Uh, we, uh, um, you know, I uh, get to see each other around town a bit, and, uh, and you're involved in some other service in the community with the Eagles. Um, and you guys are the epitome of what it means to be, um, to be a good citizen and, uh, and good people, and I am so thankful for you. And this is going to make a tremendous difference to the people in our area that need food. So uh, God bless you, thank you. I'll just tell you, yeah. don't get in line behind us, stuck behind us at uh, Toys for Tots. <laughs> okay, <laughs> we I remember, yeah, yeah, yeah. We yeah. had 13 cards, <laughs> yeah. and I felt sorry for the guy in the back of the line. <laughs> you guys are such an inspiration, and I think the more that people see people like you, the more that people are driven to uh, incorporate giving into their life. It's just part of, uh, I mean, it's, it's part of who you are, um, it's part of who I am, and um, and uh, we're thankful to live in a community where so many do. But you guys are an inspiration, and I I, uh, I, I thank signal. you. I thank you. The watts, yeah. It's uh, what do we it's, got? it's seven two. Okay. Yeah, no, we, we can we can finish up. So you guys, we, any, yes, we can. Uh, any, uh, any final we words? We're going to run a video, but we're not. We don't have to run the video. We can still hang well, here a little. bit. Do you have bit. any we other can... any other things you want to share? Yeah. No. Uh, any other charities you like to call attention to that you guys are working on? Well, anyone can be, obviously, anyone can be Lions Club because you don't have to be a member to be in. We get fun for all of theirs, and that's where we gave all the toys for tots this year. We brought them out here. Good uh, group. God, what a USO, good group of people. Of the USO. Oh, Chad Tough Foundation is a real big one with my sister. Um, and they, we do a run for that. I don't run anymore, but they do. The employees do. <laughs> It's awesome. So St. Jude's. And St. Jude. St. Jude, yeah. That's St. another Jude. beautiful that's, one. And that's my, even something simple. Christmas cards. They make your Christmas cards for yeah. you. Yeah. Well, what a you know, cool <laughs> little story. We just had, we just had um, a child that is uh, unfortunately dying. 
Uh, there's a friend of mine uh, who I work with on with food pantry, and uh, their daughter teaches this child, and she's dying, and there's no hope she's going to die within a month or so, is what they estimate. So we asked for cards, and uh, the Lake Orion High School, a good friend of mine over there, Julia Delrymple, spread the word, and it, it spread like wildfire. Um, just shipped 280 handmade cards to this little girl because she loves getting them. It like means so much to her nine-year-old girl. Uh, that is where we live. That is who uh, who we are and that's who you guys are and so thank you um, for all you do and continue to do and um, yeah just thanks thank for you introducing again. me to it I'm yeah glad well, I met you I'm so glad that I met you too and you thank guys are you. wonderful and I uh, will see you out on the lake here what in a couple weeks probably we'll be out yeah. on the lake I think Hopefully. yeah yeah all right well hey Ian I'm gonna toss back to you you ready uh, I don't know if we can top that that is the stories it's incredible the donations uh, this is a true inspiration and the spirit of giving. This is this is what it's about. Um, I have my children grew up doing this food drive with us, packing and collecting food, going around the neighborhoods to help those who uh, don't have enough to eat. And that was kind of the spirit of how this food drive came along 14 years ago. So how can you donate? Um, I know we're up against the clock here. We're going to be get out of here at 2 p.m. But we're going to be here all week from 12 to 2 for this live look in this little lunch break. So how can you donate? Donate online at ori9tv.org. Click that food drive logo button and donate to the charity GoFundMe. Some uh, fees are taken out, so keep that in mind. If you'd like to donate in person, head on over to 1349 Joslin Road right here at the Orion Center. And uh, that check, 100 or cash, 100% goes directly to fish. And you can also drop off your food items if you so care to do so. You can put it in our production van. And we're looking to fill that production van uh, all this week to get those donations over. So yes, uh, so far the production van is pretty empty. Uh, we could use a couple donations. I think we have a couple cases of uh, soup, chunky soup, and some mac and cheese in there ready to go. So uh, the van is open from 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. Monday through Thursday, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. on Friday. So get those donations in. If you can't make it out during this week, don't worry. We can, uh, ONTV is a year-round collection uh, location for fish, as is Northern Wholesale Flooring. So yeah, get those donations in. Uh, also head on over to one of our sponsors, uh, Lucky's. Uh, they are collecting in our behalf currently, right now. So head on over to Lucky's and drop off your food donations there. I, I'm not sure how much time I have. Uh, Jim, what do we got? What's our, what's our countdown, anything? A couple more minutes? Five minutes, okay, great. So, uh, three minutes, <laughs> live TV, what are you gonna do? Um, so yes, thank you for tuning into this 12 to two. Uh, in just a moment, we're gonna send you off to a video that shows everything about fish and what they're about. Uh, don't forget food items this time of year change. We're trying to restock those shelves after the holiday rush. Uh, this year was a pretty uh, big rush on the food pantry and some of the families were turned away, unfortunately. We want to prevent that from happening again if we can do so. So look at canned pineapples and canned fruits like mandarin oranges, chilies, beef stew, sloppy joe mix, and other meal prep items. Uh, ketchup and mustard, canned uh, uh, chicken, chunky soups, uh, baked beans, taco shells, cake mix, fenomen hygiene products, and school supplies are always welcome and other toiletries are always welcome as donations. And fish is always wonderful to their clients. If you are in a food emergency, we haven't uh, given the number out today. We should do that just before we get out of here. If you are in a food emergency, do not hesitate to call 248-628-3933. And you can visit Oxford Orion Fish on their website at OxfordOrionFish.org. People are there to help you today. So make sure you make that call to get that assistance you need. Don't hesitate. It is always there for you. Okay, I'm Ian Locke here for uh, ON TV, and I'm going to say thanks to Matt Pfeiffer for sitting in with us, Kim Rodowski sitting in with us, Donnie Steele for hopping in the studio, and of course our sponsors for making our collections uh, possible to reach that goal. I was going to say that $6,000 goal, but we just launched past that goal. Um, I'm, I'm speechless. I, Kim's over here dancing, it's crazy. We are celebrating here in the studio, but that, you know what that means? We are adjusting our goal now. It is now going to be way higher. We're gonna have to change our graphics for the rest of the week and we're good to go. Okay, we'll see you at uh, noon tomorrow. Stay tuned for more programming here on ONTV. We'll see you at noon tomorrow, Tuesday. Take it easy, everybody.